Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Vapor by developer Jeron Braxton. Uh, this is described as an exploration of a surreal interpretation of Samsara, so nothing too particularly different about the idea of playing through a first-person surreal exploration game, uh, but this is going to differ in the fact that we're actually covering the concept of Samsara, which, if you're not familiar with, is the belief that's held by a number of different religions, Buddhism, Taoism, Sikhism, Jainism, uh, perhaps even a couple of other ones, that essentially life is powered through the concept of reincarnation. Uh, so there's a cycle, basically, of birth, life, death, and then rebirth that stretches on in both directions as far as you can go forever, sort of like a fractal, in essence. Uh, so we're going to be con uh, exploring that concept and seeing how the developers interpreted it, taking in the sights and sounds, of course, as usual, and just seeing if we can make any meaningful connections as we walk around the world. Uh, so the name Vapor, in and of itself, is actually a really good way to reference the concept of Samsara, considering Vapor implies the, uh, the essence of water uh, turning into clouds and, you know, sort of perpetuating that same cycle in that direction as well. Uh, so as far as gaminess, things that we need to talk about from a core gameplay concept perspective, we've got controls. That's a thing. WASD or arrow keys to move, spacebar to jump, or we can also use mouse left click to create a bridge. Uh, so we'll use that whenever we get stuck or we might need to explore something in a little bit more detail. I should warn you, first of all, there are some issues with this game. I've definitely noticed some really, really bad frame rate at times, so maybe some optimization problems. Uh, or it might just be the place that I'm standing and the things that I'm looking at on occasion. I've noticed that also seems to be a thing. I haven't played particularly far into this, maybe two, three minutes tops just to get a feel for what's going on. But that's stuff I noticed right off the beginning here. Uh, so we emerged from this tunnel in the sky that I'm going to liken to very much a, uh, you know, recreation of the idea of birth coming out of the birth canal, merging into the world, the light blinding you as you come down from the sky, which is very much what happens when you're born. You fall out of the sky. No, I mean, you know what I mean. And uh, the first thing we see is a rainbow of these very strange bouncing sprites that seem to have coalesced into a little ball on the ground, which might actually be causing some of the frame rate issues. Uh, and then we see... A, uh, a woman facing the sky with her hand up in sort of an exclamatory pose with a void in her abdomen, uh, which I am assuming implies sort of the feeling of loss as you give birth to someone as they become separate from you, and now you feel like that thing that you've been nurturing for all that time is now just absent from your life in a way. But, you know, then again, here we are looking at our mother who is very, very much larger than us, which I think would probably explain the scale a little bit. That also makes for a good uh, pathing instrument, the fact that we can see through this character is going to lead us on in a direction towards something new. So we've got, in this case now, a bit of a, like a statue, a palm facing toward the sky, hand with, could be some symbology. I might not be familiar with a lot of the references that are made here, and if that's the case, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm not sure if that's referencing something in particular. Um, I mean, the, the obvious implication that I'm jumping to from this is maybe it's something to do with the lunar cycle, which would also fit in ca uh, the case of, you know, talking about birth and life and death and all of those things. I mean, a lot of these things are very analogous just in and of themselves, but uh, the idea of the moon and the sun, you know, rotating around each other in perpetuity, that's definitely a thing. So if I touch that, uh, that's actually going to take us somewhere else, so we're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're going to go over here and take a look at this avatar of whatever kind it seems to be. Uh, I'm almost getting the... I did sort of a mechanistic-looking creation with... I wanted to say, like, an industrial-looking camera for a head, but I'm not entirely sure that is what that is. Could also just be a strange, particularly ornate head. But as we notice that, a big old swath of strange things appears in the sky, so I'm just going to kind of take a look at that for a second. Getting a bit of a vibe of, um... like a fract OSC feeling from this. I guess maybe it's just the way that there's these clean, kind of contrasty looking arcs, bright colors, and a soothing atmosphere. I mean, the ability to just wander around this stuff is always endlessly entertaining and interesting to me. And I also just really enjoy seeing how developers interpret very vague and abstract concepts in terms of actual, you know, animation, motion, uh, playing of objects against each other, and just in general, just, you know, 3D models, just the way that you can look at those and the way that they can tell a story uh, very much a different way to interpret things than to just read them or to just listen to music. I mean, it's the whole experience of, you know, audio, visuals, and interactivity is why we care about this medium, right? So the swoop seems to have come back around and is now heading back toward the ground. This, the uh, frame rate seems a little bit better over here. 
for whatever reason. Maybe uh, it feels better that these arcs are in the sky instead of in the ground. Maybe there's some collision issues. I don't know. Uh, I'm liking this quite a bit. This is very artistic, what's happening right here. Definitely some good uh, moments that maybe could be screenshotted. I feel like maybe I should do a bridge. I just feel like every time I've done a bridge, there's been a quite a frame rate drop from that, so I've been a little hesitant to do it, but I believe also all of these objects, uh, other than the bridge, are not able to uh, be stood on. Yeah, the clipping is just going to put us right through them, essentially. Alright, so that seems to be a very pretty swath of things. I'm not really sure what that's going to represent, other than just sort of this, the ebb and flow of ethereal energy, something like that. It's definitely not something concrete that I could just say, oh, it's obviously this. I mean, it could just be light waves for all I know. So let's head back over here, and we'll touch the palm of this, whatever it might be. Oh my, the, the jumping is very spacey right now. I don't know if it was quite that spacey before. Alright, let's jump up this palm, and there we go. So we've touched that gem, and it has brought us to possibly an endless red desert. And we're finding ourselves, I believe that is a head embedded in that desert. Maybe we've just emerged from the brain of our character. I think that was supposed to be like a reveal moment, actually, as I came around the side of this, that uh, actually I was walking out of something's head, perhaps. So we've taken on the physical embodiment of the energy of thought. That's certainly a surreal concept, isn't it? We've been given ambulatory abilities and autonomy as a bit of thought floating through space. Yeah, it's definitely what was going on there. So let's head over towards the next, well, several landmarks, actually. We've got another hand, which is probably the next path forward. And all of a sudden, we've been tutorialized to, actually. It's given us a bit of information about what we can expect and what might happen even in this surreal world. Uh, it's very easy to just create landmarks in perspective just based on one action and the results that have been given from that. And that's just something we do kind of intrinsically as human beings, isn't it? We see something, we observe its reaction, and then we just bank that for later and hope that it's going to be something we can predict uh, will react the same way in the future. And then when it doesn't, then we have to go into this whole other realm of analytical thinking, trying to come up with ways to rationalize or justify why something did what it did. And that's kind of how we get to a lot of levels of reasoning, actually, and uh, even levels of psychology, honestly. So we've got a very large figure laying in the desert. Uh, looks like a nude female. And I'm not sure what that's really to say, other than maybe this is... Did we come out of a thought and then end up observing from a distance the fading life of a being. Maybe we're going, this was the life that we walked through, and then we're observing death, and then that's going to be the next uh, sort of transcendental plateau that we're going to land on. What's going on over here? There's like a strange monolith. Pardon my jumping, by the way. I feel like it's might, just might possibly be making me slightly faster, but I don't know. could also just be placebo effect, because so many games, jumping does seem to make you faster, so I just kind of hope that that's the case. So I've noticed something up in the sky there that is a little too far away and vague for me to actually figure out what it is. I'd like to get a closer look, but it, there's no zoom in, so I guess the only thing I could really do is build a bridge to it. Uh, possibly. I can try and chain bridges also, but I think the more bridges that I spawn, uh, the less chance of having any possible frame rate there is. Ah, oh, it's such a shame that the frame rate's marring this to this level. Can we get a little closer? So it just seems like it's maybe a little gem of some kind made of polygons. I don't know if we could maybe interact with it or what, but I'd like to. Uh, I might be stuck now on this bridge. Oh, maybe I've just reached... I think there might just be an invisible wall in the ceiling. Oh, that stinks. What can you do? So we can clearly go into that little cubby hole over there, or maybe it's actually not even anything. It might just be a little... Uh, like a cube that's cut out of the larger cube. And... Oh, that's a cool look. That would explain a lot of why the frame rate's been so bad, though, if that's what's going on. There's, like, view distance fog sometimes, and then not other times, but I feel like it's not actually culling anything, it's just sort of there. Oh, is this a different path? Oh, I wonder if I could take this path instead of the hand. Maybe there's actually branching stuff going on here. This is very interesting. What about over here? I saw there was another 
figure off in the distance on the horizon, and I wonder if this also might be a different path too. I do want to take a, time, a little bit of time and just sort of explore. I guess if there's going to be anywhere that would have the most opportunities for uh, changing your path would be the life segment of things. Considering the whole concept of Samsara, I mean, in some cases, maybe not in all cases, has to do with atonement or your ability to uh, make it through life in a way that seems useful or reasonable, and then it sort of sets you on a different path based on what you did. I mean, it's sort of a setup for a game concept right in and of itself. I don't know what this is all about. It looks like sort of a, an exasperated gesticulation as well as like an emotive face. I'm wondering if this is like feeling of loss or something? I almost am getting that from it. Maybe I should just click on this one and see what we get if we head in this direction. See if we could maybe explain a little bit of what's going on here. That's if that even does what I expected it to do, which, okay, it did. Oh, goodness. Alright, so we're out in the middle of an empty void with nebulous kind of chunks of ground flying around. Okay, this is definitely... Oh, I've fallen through the floor. That's probably bad. Uh, I hope we can reset somehow. Okay, there's actually a ground here. And let's hope that we can actually just kind of clip back up through the bottom of this. Now I'm starting to feel like, what if this could go in like a, a Yume Nikki direction? Uh, and just really get into like some really very specific nitty gritty about life and death and concepts of, you know, various emotions, way that you could live your life, different choices you could make. And then always a surreal interpretation of the reaction to that whatever it might be. That's something I could really get into. I would easily pay a bunch of money for something that is very substantive, that follows that kind of a gameplay path. And right now, I'm pretty impressed, honestly, with what I'm seeing. Aside from the frame rate issues, this is really, really cool. I'm very much into this. Uh-oh. Uh, I might have gotten myself stuck again. That's okay. Uh, careful, careful! I gotta spawn one under me. Uh-oh. What have I done? Oh, no! I don't know why the... The bridge always flips over. I don't know if it's just me going through it or what, but this is probably not good. I hope there's a ground again, or if maybe I've just... I hope I haven't just fallen completely off everything. I should mention also, I have the sound turned rather far down. Oh, it's brought me back. Okay, so maybe I've failed that path, and we're back in the desert for another chance at life. We could go right to that one, or we could go maybe back to the, the cavernous cube, which is maybe where I am going to consider going. Um, but I, there's been some really good audio as well, a uh, very stereo-positional kind of audio that if you can't really hear it loud enough, you should definitely go give this a download, uh, because it's actually very hypnotic. Uh, the whole feeling of this in general has been very therapeutic and just relaxing, uh, which there's something to be said for that as well. There's not enough games that I feel embrace this kind of just wandering, uh, you know, I want to say aimless, but I feel like that's got a little bit of a negative charge to it. It's not necessarily aimless, but it doesn't have to be focused if you don't choose it to be. And I think that's a thing that I think a lot of games need to embrace a little bit more these days. Everything is so driven to just get to the point and finish. Sometimes you just want to linger in the moment a little bit, and I think developers in the indie sphere of things are starting to come onto that idea as being an okay and, and justifiable uh, one and I think a lot of the bigger developers they haven't even really come close to even realizing that that's a thing that any market segment wants uh, and maybe I mean proportionately maybe the market segments don't really want that maybe it's just a very small demographic of people like me oh my god the frame rate is so bad alright so there's like a waterfall of cascading rainbow sprites I'm gonna assume this is probably the same ones at the beginning that were causing the frame rate quite a bit of grief, but that is rather pretty, whatever is going on here. Okay, now that I've gotten a bit closer... Oh, was it better? I can't quite tell. That's cool. I like what's going on here. That's a little horrific up in the sky. There's, like, faces going in various directions. Also getting a little bit of, like, a Lawnmower Man vibe from the low-poly models. I don't know if that's intended. It might just be... My brain putting together vague connections to things. That is, like, it's really pretty, but I want this to just run at full frames. Because without it, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's sacrificing quite a bit of the visual interest in Fidelity here. I kind of just want to sit and watch these for a while, but they are going to eventually all coalesce into a ball like they did in the first area. So I should probably just, you know, move on up to this point. If we can reach it. I think we can. Yep, there we go. I've touched it, and... Oh, I'm transcending to the sky, so this must have been death. 
And now we're maybe going to the cycle to rebirth. Oh, that's really weird. Oh, it looks like the waterfall is endless. So unless these are getting culled, eventually this is just going to crash the game, I would guess. Or maybe they're falling off into a void that I wasn't noticing. Uh, where the ground is, like, solid for me, but not solid for them. That would kind of make that all work. I forgot if I mentioned this, but I actually have this on the lowest possible settings. So I'm... You know, I'm running a pretty solid rig. I've got two GTX 770s and 16 gigs of RAM. To run a Unity game at 30 frames per second while recording seems like it should be pretty trivial. That would be my guess anyway. Oh, and it looks like we've come full circle back to the birth canal, where we are actually getting a full 60 frames per second. Let's just see if once we're born, we spawn out into the same sort of world that we had prior. Because uh, when I launched the game, actually, the first, like, 10 seconds or so were extremely choppy, and now they seem to be pretty much fine. So that makes me wonder if we're going to emerge into the same world or somewhere different. I mean, honestly, either direction would poetically fit the theme, if it's different or if it's the same. Okay, it looks like it's probably going to be the same thing, unless there's some sort of slight change here. They should probably get rid of the... oh, okay. I'm going to say maybe get rid of the title card, but then again, maybe it's not necessary either. I don't know. Very cool game. I definitely enjoyed this experience. I wish there was even more to see other than just the couple of choices. Like, I, I could easily see this being just a very engrossing, massive landscape full of different focal points and animations and different musical themes that you could run into. And, of course, like, again, the, the frame rate needs to be addressed, obviously, but uh, I could easily see this being a big deal. Like, people could really get into this and spend a lot of time wandering about uh, I could even see this being a thing that's got one of those, like, occasional online check-ins where it'll just update, and then all of a sudden there'll be, like, a bunch of new areas with new features that you won't even notice, and then all of a sudden it'll be like, hey, let's go explore that area for a while. Maybe you could bring a friend with you, sort of Dark Souls style, and wander about together and see if you take a divergent life path, or maybe you could share a path together and see what you experience from it, uh, make decisions, meet new people. I don't know, I've gone off in a completely different tangential direction with the idea now. Uh, as it is, is fine as well. But I'm just thinking, like, what could be if you have the ability to share a life with another person, how you could maybe have those things combine. I don't know, maybe there's something to that. Anyway, I'll leave that to you to decide in the comments. It might be a terrible idea, to be honest, but uh, feel free to chime in. Let me know what you think in this. I think I may have gotten myself completely lost. Whenever this happens, this would always be a great moment to uh, show a little cursor on the ground or, like, a little directional arrow that's like, hey, uh, game's over there again, if this is what you're up for. If you're not, then that's cool, just keep walking over here, but uh, in case you do want to get back to, like, the focal points, like, this is where those are at, because I've lost all bearings and directional, uh, you know, ability to parse where I'm at. This is just a void. There's nothing here. There's just nothing to look at. Anyway, that's gonna do it for another episode, guys. Vapor, very, very cool. Thumbs up. Go check it out. You can go play it in your browser or give it a download. It's an each.io game, so if you're interested, I definitely recommend trying to support the developer for with a dollar or two if you can, or whatever you think is appropriate. Even more is even better, of course. And uh, if you're not into that, you can pay nothing and download it as well. But there will be a link again in the description. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, and of course, leave a like if you enjoyed the episode. So thanks for watching again. As always, I will be back with another one real soon. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you all later. Have a great night, everybody.